On this vote, the yeas are 182, the nays are 238. The amendment is not adopted. The Smith-Amash amendment was struck down in the House on May 18th. The amendment would have done away with the provision in the National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, which allows for the indefinite detention of American citizens and those arrested on U.S. soil, without any trial, either in a military tribunal or a federal court. The bipartisan amendment was supported by Democratic Representative Adam Smith of Washington State and Republican Representative Justin Amash of Michigan. Is that the government is claiming the power under the Afghanistan authorization for use of military force as a justification for entering American homes to grab people, indefinitely detain them, and not give them a charge in a trial. That's the frightening thing. That's the thing that the Smith-Amash Amendment fixes. It's the only amendment that does it. I sometimes hear this uh, strange argument that the Constitution applies only to citizens, not persons. If you read the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment, it applies to persons. Those are the amendments that provide for due process. James Madison said the Constitution applies to persons. And logic dictates that the Constitution applies to persons. It applies to non-citizens. Is the government allowed to make non-citizens worship a state religion? Is the government allowed to take non-citizens' property without compensation? Can the government quarter troops in non-citizens' homes? Can the government conduct unreasonable searches and seizures on non-citizens' houses? Of course not. That's ridiculous. Everybody here understands that's ridiculous. No one disputes that all persons in the U.S. are covered by the Constitution. Hask claims to protect persons. The House Armed Services Committee and the NDAA claims to protect per persons with respect to habeas. The Gohmert Amendment claims to protect persons, not citizens. And the Smith-Amash Amendment protects persons. It's a phony argument. But taking another stance, some Republican representatives warned that this amendment threatened national security. This led to a very contentious debate on the House floor between Republican Texas Representative Matt Thornberry and Democratic Representative Adam Smith. And let me make one other point. One of the key problems that many of us have with the Smith-Amash Amendment is that it would bestow upon illegal aliens who come to this country to carry out terrorist attacks. It would bestow upon them full constitutional rights. That means basically that if I said I would not yield, I, I asked again. The, the gentleman from Texas controls the time. What that means is, as soon as a, a member of al-Qaeda sets foot on American soil, the first thing he hears after you are under arrest is you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to be provided an attorney, and if you can't afford one, an attorney will be, be provided with you. Now, th there may be differences about how we should treat illegal aliens who come here as members of al-Qaeda to conduct terrorist attacks, but I think the vast majority of people in this body and around the country do not think give it, telling them they have the right to remain silent as the first thing they hear is, is a wise thing. You just to respond to the arguments from the gentleman from Texas, if an al-Qaeda terrorist comes to the U.S., whether they're an illegal alien or not, frankly, we want them arrested, tried, and convicted. All we want to do is make sure that they actually are a terrorist is a terrorist before we do that, to have a process in place so that the president doesn't have that power to simply lock somebody up without due process in a trial. And then the argument about how we are bestowing upon illegal aliens constitutional rights. I, I've got bad news for the gentleman from Texas. We aren't bestowing anything. The United States Constitution bestows upon them those rights. The United States Constitution says any person in the U.S., not citizen, not legal, it doesn't matter. So if he has a beef, he has a beef with James Madison and everybody else who supported the Constitution. A day before the congressional vote, a case against the NDAA's indefinite detention provision was decided on before a New York federal court. Despite the House voting on the NDAA, a federal judge has issued a preliminary injunction that would block certain provisions of the bill, namely a statute that allows the indefinite detention of anyone labeled a suspected terrorist. That includes U.S. citizens on U.S. soil. Human rights activists are celebrating this decision as a step in the right direction. 
Judge Forrest has already fixed the problem. She's issued an injunction. She'd stopped the enforcement of the NDAA. It's an enormous victory for progressives and, and uh, people who are concerned with civil liberties throughout the country. And Judge Forrest, um, I think, has is, 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 uh, done something that is quite heroic and courageous, no matter what Congress does. Frankly, the only reason that Congress is considering this is because we brought this lawsuit and because of Judge, uh, Judge Forrest's opinion. Carl Mayer is the attorney who defended the case presented by notables like Chris Hedges of the New York Times and MIT professor Noam Chomsky. He says that after President Obama signed the NDAA bill on New Year's Eve, it was their mission to see that Americans' constitutional rights were protected. Mayer also stressed the need for everyday citizens to get involved in fighting indefinite detention provisions. As long as there's a preliminary injunction, activists should enjoy their civil liberties and speak out and uh, they no longer have to be afraid that a black van is going to come up uh, on the street in the middle of the night with two hooded men and, and shove them in the black van and take them to a military brig, because that's uh, now been ruled unconstitutional by Judge Forrest. Now, after the House voted the amendment down, Robert Naiman says it's even more imperative for the government to clarify the language of the NDAA. There is actually a lot of concern about the uh, existing provisions of the National Defense Authorization Act and wanting Congress to clarify that, you know, there is, uh, we're not going to permit any erosion of these basic Bill of Rights protections of citizens against government power. In a previous interview with The Real News, former Chief of Staff to Colin Powell, Larry Wilkerson, echoed these sentiments and warned about the seriousness of this issue. We're creating tyranny in this country as surely as if we sat down and went over to Jefferson's memorial where he says, I've sworn eternal hostility to all forms of tyranny over the mind of man and tore it down. For The Real News, Jessica Devereaux, Washington.